show. It's okay. First of all, how did you how did you find the idea for Creation du Monde? This is a piece I've been really um, having on my mind for almost 10 years. All right. It started in 2004 when I first read uh, in a book published in France a year before that, uh, which was a book studying the presence of black characters in French theater for over 500 years. And so when I, in that book, I read about La Création du Monde as the first Negro ballet, as they uh, were, were saying then. So I started researching about it, and the more I learned things about this piece, the more I felt like the need to react to it. But for a long time for me, it was like, I will never have the means to do this piece because it's huge. And from the very beginning, my idea was to make a piece where, because the original piece is so short, it's 17 minutes, yeah. that would have like a reconstruction of the original piece as a quotation. And therefore the piece would be like some form of uh, discourse um, of which the conclusion can only come after you've gone through uh, a stage where you have the reconstruction. And it's, so at first I only wrote a text in 2005, which was like a letter to Jean Borlin and Blaise Sondras, uh, and which was published uh, in a catalogue for an exhibition that happened in France in 2005. The exhibition was called Montparnasse Noir, and it was about the f uh, African or black um, intellectual and artistic presence in France from 1906 to 1966. Uh, why were they so proud of having the first Negro ballet? Why were they so proud? I can't say. But I can put that within a more general um, context of like artists in in Europe or in Paris, particularly around there. It started at the beginning of the 20th century, you know, with African masks and sculpture, um, which later on inspired people like Picasso. And, and, but while Picasso never claimed to make any African art, so it was more like an inspiration to have him, um, you know, explore new directions. It's curious to see that for the performance um, scene, it had to be claimed as a Negro ballet. And for entertainment reasons, so. Yes, definitely. And that's really something um, also fascinating to me, because how can they have started from that spot where it's about trying to find a new spring for Europe after World War I, and for themselves as well, because you know, Blaise Sandras had been really traumatized by the war and he lost, the, he, he got injured and he was amputated yeah. from his right arm. So that's the starting point, but the result is this inoffensive, entertaining a piece. Why were artists at least ignoring colonialism, which was at least a present thing, especially after the First World War? I don't, I don't I think it's only the artists. I think artists are also a reflection of the world they live in. Yeah. And the world they lived in just chose to ignore colonialism. And even today, the colonial history, at least in France, mm -hmm. because it, uh, you cannot understand that in France there is no post-colonial studies at, no, in French universities. So it's like pushing it aside Mm -hmm. And this way, you keep, by not recognizing uh, that colonial history, you can afford to also not take responsibility for what's going on in the present. Awesome. Thank you so much, Foster.